Working VHF DX is a lot of fun, but it can be challenging. I'm Andrew, VK3FS, and in this video, I'll show you the tools I use to work VHF from minus 20 to 40 over. The six and two meter bands can be a lot of fun. After all, they don't call six meters the magic band for nothing. These bands come to life as we come out of winter and head towards summer. In the southern states of Australia, six metre activity kicks off late October, with big signals from one end of the country to the other, even New Zealand, JA and beyond. There are two methods of VHF propagation, tropospheric ducting and sporadic E. Tropospheric ducting, or tropo as it's affectionately known to the locals, is signal propagation along a temperature inversion. The tropospheric layer starts at sea level and rises to 10 kilometres above the surface of the planet. And this is where all our weather happens. Sporadic E is the second type of VHF propagation. This occurs at much higher altitudes, as the name suggests. In the E layer, some 90 to 120 kilometres up. Either way, both these methods of propagation ramp up as we come into summer. There's more activity in the early morning here in the southern states, and it's not uncommon to hear dozens of locals on the bottom end of two metres when the band is open. As the bands come to life, signals will slowly come out of the noise. Even if you can't hear them, you can still work distance stations digitally. WISPR stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporting and is used on all bands. WISPR sends and receives low power data transmissions consisting of a call sign, a four digit locator and transmitted power measured in dBm. The program can decode signals with a signal to noise ratio as low as minus 34 dB in a bandwidth of 2500 Hz. Even if you don't have whisper transmission capabilities, you can still see live propagation on the band of your choice in the region of your choice on the whisper website. You can see the band come to life with increased reporting between stations, as well as the direction of propagation. This means you'll know which way to point your antenna. VK Spotter is another interactive website for real-time monitoring of the amateur bands. As beacons are heard and contacts are made, registered users post spots, which draws a path on the map between the two stations. Again, this is a site for those who are interested in propagation. The site supports multiple bands and emissions, and there's a chat which is for those trying to establish a reliable contact. As VK Spotter is user-generated data, it's a great place to find current information on beacons around the country, like, for example, if it's on air. VK Spotter also has a PSK reporter viewer, a distance and bearing calculator, and also a tropospheric propagation map, which gives a visual indication of the tropospheric conditions. While on the subject of tropo ducting, William Hepburn's DX Info Centre is another reputable source of band conditions. The Hepburn charts, as they're often known, offer a six-day tropospheric forecast of the entire world. But the Australia and New Zealand region is what we're interested in. Here, you can step through the forecast maps and plan ahead. The Hepburn Tropo Index is the degree of tropospheric bending forecast to occur over a particular area, which is an indication of the overall strength of tropospheric radio signal strengths on a linear scale from 0 to 10. It's worth noting, overland paths are usually the strongest at sunrise and weakest mid-afternoon. Water paths are usually the strongest at mid-afternoon and weakest at sunrise. A combination of land and water paths 
may peak at various times depending on the local weather conditions. Keep in mind that since tropospheric propagation occurs at the lowest part of the atmosphere, local terrain has a big impact. Significant variation in signal strengths and interference can be expected depending on the local effects, often between locations only a few kilometres apart. This is especially true during elevated ducting events, where elevation becomes increasingly important. Unstable signal areas are areas which may have isolated or scattered heavy rain showers, even thunderstorms, which could occasionally disrupt paths and cause unusual and sometimes rapid variations in signal strengths. This often occurs when the lower atmosphere is stable, but the middle and upper atmosphere is unstable. This is most pronounced at night and also ahead of warm fronts. So now you have the tools, it's time to get on the air. The easiest way to get on the air digitally is by using a radio with a provision for USB audio. You'll find this feature in most modern radios, else you might have to get the soldering iron out to make a few cables. There are many software options to choose from for digital radio, and my software of choice is WSJTX, which is open source software designed for weak signal digital communications by amateur radio. It's capable of Whisper, FT8, and a raft of other digital modes, including MSK for meteor scatter enthusiasts. When the bands seem dead, chances are you just can't hear the activity. But there's a very good chance your computer can. So in order of appearance, firstly check Whisper for activity, then FT8 or sideband, or both depending on the state of the bands. Once FT8 signals rise to minus 10 or 0 dB, it's time to go voice. Don't forget, the 6 metre and 10 metre beacons, which are dotted all over Australia, are also great indicators of band conditions. Between 6 and 2 metres is the FM broadcast band, and this too can be monitored for band conditions. So as we head into spring each year, it's time to tune up the antenna, dust off the radio and update your software. Working DX on these bands is very rewarding and it's open to all classes of license. So I look forward to hearing you on the air.